Welcome to the Next Level Human Podcast. As a human, you have a job to do. In fact, you have four jobs. To earn and manage money, to attain and maintain health and fitness, to build and sustain personal relationships, to find meaning and make a difference. None of these jobs are taught in school, and that is what this podcast is designed to do, to educate us all on living our most fulfilled lives through the mastery of these four jobs. I'm your host, Dr. Jade Tita, and I believe we are here living this life for three reasons and three reasons only, to learn, to teach, and to love. Love. In this podcast, I will be learning, teaching, and loving right along with you. I'm grateful to have your company. Here's to our next level. Level. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Tita. This is the Next Level Human podcast. And I have a very special guest today, someone who I hit up on Instagram and begged him to come on to the show. And this is Avi Sherbill. And uh, he is from GetSoundRx.com and is an expert in sound healing and sound therapy. And I, you know, as I do, as all of you know, I, I like to go across and I use Instagram and social media primarily as one of my educational platforms and came across Avi. He is doing some really incredible stuff and have been following him and educating myself uh, through him on sound therapy. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted him on the show, because from my perspective, frequencies are kind of misunderstood in, in, in this, this space. This is something that Avi does. He does sort of these natural frequencies. You know, if you know sound bowls and gongs and all this kind of stuff, this is kind of what he focuses on. And he's using uh, sound therapy in many ways to treat things like anxiety and other things and actually trains practitioners in how to do this work. So, Avi, really excited you're here. Welcome to the show. And I guess let's just start out, number one, with a thank you for your work. The Next Level Human podcast is really all about people who have gone through their struggles and Mm -hmm. through their struggles and their pain, they have found their purpose. Sounds like that is 1000% your story. And just thank you for the work that you're doing to help educate all of us. And I guess start wherever you want, Avi. How did you get started in this work and uh, break it down for us? And then we'll kind of get into uh, sort of the particulars of what this work actually is. Yeah, so I got into this work around 2015, 2016, and it came on the heels of kind of like you were mentioning, um, you know, I would spent some years struggling with addiction and obviously understanding that is realizing it's a lot of unresolved trauma, unresolved pain, and that was manifesting in the form of, you know, uh, substance abuse. But before that was occurring, I was working in music production here in LA. And so I was always working in music. Um, that was just kind of my life's passion. Uh, but then the space that I was in where I was doing it and just my mental and physical, you know, wellness was just compromised. And so I ended up really kind of falling apart for a period of time. And then when I started to get my life back together and get into recovery, uh, somebody who knew I was, you know, had worked in music brought me to a session where somebody was incorporating sound. And I just had a really profound experience. I felt like my anxiety levels, my stress levels was just a complete 180. And I just became really interested in almost like the mechanics of it, like how it was able to do that. I hadn't experienced that. And so uh, it sent me on a journey and I've just kind of been on that journey ever since. 
I love that, man. So I'm a novice when it comes to music. So let me let me just ask you a couple questions about this. So when you when, before you got into sound therapy, you were obviously involved with music. How much did you know about different frequencies and, and things like that? Is that something that you know uh, is oftentimes talked about, or is that something you're educated on when you're in the music world? And I think you were a producer, right? So I'm wondering how much education did you have in actually these frequencies and how they worked, or was it just more beats and you know things like that? I'm I'm curious how how you came to this. If that's something that you just innately know when you study music, or is it something you come to understanding? Yeah. So, you know, I worked a lot in composition and I had a long partnership with somebody who we were kind of like a duo and worked on production, worked on composition for different projects, different things towards the end. It was like more commercial work. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, frequency is understood in relation to production. So like frequencies that you don't want in a mix. So certain sounds you're kind of like wanting to bring down so that when you're hearing the music, you know, a song, for instance, if it isn't mixed well, your ears are going to go like that. You're going to kind of pull away from the sound because it's it's too intense. And so they get levels where they're bringing things down, bringing things up. So frequency is understood more through that lens mm -hmm. than how is this affecting somebody's like, you know, um, neural activity? How is this affecting somebody's like, you know, organs or, you know, I mean, that's not how it's talked about. Mm -hmm. So different in that sense. And obviously music has a very cathartic element. It can change emotional states very quickly. And I think there is really nothing quite like music that will bring you back to a moment that you had last heard it, you know? So mm -hmm. you listen to Led Zeppelin, for instance, and like you're brought back to being, you know, 16 and in a car, you know, very few things can do that. So obviously it has that emotional component and, and, and mental effect and bodily effect in terms of affecting our health. No, I don't, I don't think it was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think it was talked about too much. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's an interesting thing, right? Because I think any of us, it's it's really interesting how these things evolve. I think if you asked anyone, Avi, I mean, I'm sure, right? We all love music, right? So, and everyone is familiar how music can move you and move you emotionally. And, mm -hmm. but then we talk about, well, sound therapy, right? And there seems to be this disconnect. And I think it's partly because people don't, we still don't scientifically truly understand what is going on uh, with emotions and how that relates to our consciousness and all those things. And so perhaps that's, you know, partly what's going on here, but I think everyone knows that music can impact your emotional state. It's, it's mm -hmm. one of those things that you just grow up knowing if you like music, but it sounds like what you've done is you've gone sort of one step further to kind of go, how do these things uh, impact us? And so I'm really curious to learn from you what you began to to find out about the healing aspects of music sounds like in the beginning you were like well frequency in general i'm just going to lower some levels you know increase some levels so i can make the music you know sound a particular way so i can you know get you more focused on the music but weren't fully understanding how these frequencies may be impacting health and, and i don't even know honestly if i'm saying that correctly is it really the frequencies that are doing this or is it something else walk us through how you discovered that music and what components of music could be healing to our uh, physiology and our psychology. Yeah. So I guess a good place to start is what is sound, right? So sound is a wave and energy is obviously existing everywhere. You know, the the walls in the room that I'm in, the air, the wind, the trees, they're all moving. There's energy behind it. It is all like pulsating and, and vibrating. It is just kind of a core element of the universe. We don't experience it as sound unless it travels through something. So energy movement needs something to travel through for you to experience it as sound. So it travels through wires. It travels through a bowl, a gong, guitar string, whatever it is. And then you're able to experience those waves as sound. 
Now, what happens is depending on the amount of waves that are occurring in one second, you can have very different types of experience. And that is what hertz is. So anytime people say 528 hertz, they're really just saying 528 waves in one second. And now depending on the amount of waves that you're experiencing in one second, you can have very different effects on the nervous system, very different effects on brainwave states. And so what we're really playing with, with sound in particular, is what are the levels of waves that I'm introducing into the body? Because certain areas of the body, you know, pulsate, they move at X rate. And so then when you introduce that frequency to that area of the body, it will bring it back to its proper pattern. It will start moving at the correct speed almost. And so... You know, this isn't some out there concept. This is what they do with sports injuries. They send sound waves to sports injuries. They send sound waves to fractured bones, to to kidney stones, to diseased cells. So, I mean, they use this in hospitals. Where I think this work is different is we are, you know, not not in the sickness care. You know, we are looking to create wellness for people. You know, so it's not like wow, I have a shoulder injury, I'm looking for this. It is really optimizing people's health. And most people live in chronic stress, especially in this age. And I think we're in the age of information and in turn inundated with a lot of stressors, many of which we don't have control over. And so that wreaks havoc on our system, wreaks havoc on our our brainwave states. And so sound has this really unique ability in going into these areas and changing the way that cells move, changing the way that tissue is pulsating, changing the way at which uh, your neurons are firing. I I love that. And actually, you know, it's interesting, right, that you say ultrasound, obviously, you know, it's all over. It's all over medicine. And one of the one of the things and I'm just wondering, this is just a thought I have. I don't know if it's accurate. So maybe you can correct me on this. But one of the things I think about ultrasound, we use it for diagnostic purposes. It's kind of like, I don't know, introducing a sound in a more uh, forceful way, maybe to break up a kidney stone, let's say, or to do some diagnostic purposes. But it sounds like partly what you're saying, if I'm hearing you right, is that certain areas of the body are almost like certain like tuning forks, maybe we can use an example of, right? So let's say a particular area of the body resonates at a particular frequency. And it sounds like what you're saying is if I introduce that frequency, I can get that area of the body to resonate, you know, back in balance, perhaps, or to find its more healthy resonance. Is, is that partly, you know, um, what, what you're saying there? We'll be back after a quick break. Breaking into the show real quick because I want to tell you about a brand new free, absolutely free offer from Next Level Human. And you are going to love this and it is going to give you fantastic results for your health and fitness. Right now, the research area in health and fitness is all abuzz with something called VILPA, Vigorous Intermittent Lifestyle Physical Activity, otherwise known as Exercise Snacks or exercise bursts. Think about it this way. You wake up in your day at 8 a.m., you do one or two minutes of intense activity. Then you go about your day. A couple hours later, you do it again. A couple hours later, again. A couple hours later, again. And maybe finally again in the evening. And what this does, this very short one to three minute intermittent burst spread out throughout the day, give you similar benefits to your traditional intense activity exercise. In fact, a 2022 study in Nature Medicine found that this reduced cancer risk by 40%, cardiovascular disease by 40%. And this was just four bouts of one to three minute intermittent activity throughout the day. When they looked at doing more than that, up to 11 bouts, it was a 65% reduction for cardiovascular events. This is incredibly powerful And what I wanted to do is offer this free to the next level human community. All you need to do is go to drj.com slash snacks, register absolutely free to get these via email. And more importantly, all you need to do is put your text number in, your mobile number in, and we will text these to you four times throughout the day. Follow along 
intermittent workouts that you can do. The short, intense, one to three minute workouts in video and audio format that you can get to your text, turn on, get them done super quick, and then be done. And the beautiful thing about this, you can do them anywhere during your day because they're so short. You do not need to sweat. You won't need to shower afterwards. This is an incredibly powerful way for us to get the physical fitness benefits that we need to keep our bodies healthy and fit. And I have seen very effective results for people with weight loss as well. So go over to drjade.com slash snacks. Get these intermittent vigorous activity snacks of one to three minutes free to your email and your text and start getting results with your health and fitness and improving your health right now. drjade.com slash snacks. I hope you really love this free service from Next Level Human. And let's get back to the show. Yeah, exactly. I think most of the body is like a tuning fork, you know, where when it interacts with a frequency, it then resonates, it comes into resonance with whatever the external pattern is. So if I introduce 256 hertz, which is just 256 waves in one second, then, and they've done EEG studies on this, the brain waves will move and pulsate at the same exact rate as the external sound, Mm. right? And then as soon as that's happening in the brain waves, because the body's like one super system, if it's happening in the brain waves, it's happening in the breath, and then it's happening with the heart rate, right? If you're stressed, it's not like, oh, my heart rate just goes up. It's like your breathing changes, the way your organs are moving changes, your GI tract, your brainwave activity, all of these things are affected. So when we affect one area, all the other major pulses follow. So, you know, the body is really just like one giant tuning fork. There's a doctor, uh, Alfred Tomatis, and he says, you know, the body is one giant ear, Mm. right? And so the body is just constantly taking in sonic information and absorbing it from the skin to the fascia, to the tissue, to the cells. Yeah. I love that. I don't know if you, I don't know if you know, this is the first time you and I are meeting each other, but do you know, um, I just interviewed her. Her name's Brooke McPoyle. She has a, a, she's at musical breath work on Instagram. Anyway, she talks about this really interesting thing that, that reminds me of what you're, you're saying here that she talks about. Obviously the, the breath can impact the, the, the uh, frequency in the brain, the frequencies of the brain can impact the breath and the heart and then the fascia. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like these these things are connected uh, and you're you know, we all can do this in different ways. Right. Like I can certainly do breath work and impact this system. Uh, you're using sound to essentially impact the system. So if I'm hearing you correctly and I'm just repeating this for the listener, we introduce a particular sound. We can entrain the brain waves to that sound, to those hertz, to those waves per second. So we introduce 432 hertz. The brain starts to over a particular period of time begin to resonate with that, that can change our breath rate, heart rate, which we know also is, you know, an electromagnetic field that it gives off, you know, ECGs and EEGs, that's essentially what we are measuring. And then, you know, even impact the fascia, since many people are seeing the fascial holding patterns as being directly related to that. So if that's accurate, then How do we know? Well, well, one question I have is, do certain areas of the body resonate differently? Or is it certainly as far as we know so far that it's just primarily impacting uh, the brainwave? Like I'm wondering, you know, let's let's take the chakra systems, for example. Do we know that they resonate perhaps at certain areas? I'm just wondering, or are we just working with the brain states? Yeah, it's interesting. I I talk about this in, in my trainings. You know, the medical sim- symbol the caduceus is where it's like the two snakes wrapping around the pole yep. so you know that's based off of hermes staff which is hermes trismegistus in egyptian mythology where it's a staff and you know i i think the idea is that the two snakes are quarreling it's like the pole and them kind of um coming into balance with each other uh what people say though is that in in terms of the symbolism there is that if you look at the chakras the kundalini rising it is actually two snakes wrapping around the spine traveling upwards Mm. 
And so when we talk about chakras, you know, Carl Jung says chakras are archetypes. So it's a way of understanding how energy or how waves are moving through the body. And so, you know, chakras to me are an entryway to understanding the energetic movement in the body. We could also use the elements. We could use the doshas. You know, there's a lot of ways of of understanding this. Um, but what they, I think, all connect to is that there are harmonics. To me, chakras are harmonics. And harmonics are the way that sound is moving up and down the body. And what will happen is that when you know, you go through a difficult experience and, you know, whatever it may be, it could be, you know, shock trauma, could be chronic stress, it could be pre-verbal, whatever it looks like. We tend to hold that pattern in the body in a certain area. And because we haven't had a caregiver attuned to that, or we haven't internally been able to process it or integrate it, it gets stored in our body as a pattern of stress. And so when sound goes into that area, could be an exact frequency or it could be an instrument which is delivering a lot of different frequencies at once, and it can release that pattern of stress in that area of the body. And so it's almost like changing the radio dial from compression to decompression. It's like tight a pattern of tightness and tension, and then it opens up and it releases. Mm. Yeah, you know, it's interesting that uh, you and I are first meeting, but my my listeners would know kind of what you're talking about. And I'll, I'll walk you through this and tell me if this is what you're talking about. I talk about it as what I call MUD, which is an acronym for misguided unconscious decisions or misguided unconscious dysfunction. So that when we go through our childhood development, our adolescent development, um, we end up running into difficulty, struggles, uh, trials, tribulations, sometimes capital T traumas that essentially uh, get stuck in our unconscious like you're talking about. They're misguided because uh, obviously we didn't have the tools, the know-how, the maturity, the wisdom to deal with these events at the time. Uh, they're unconscious because they're sort of in our unconscious body, which we could call you know, chakras and the unconscious sort of system perhaps. And they're decisions sometimes because we do create stories in our minds out of these, we make a choice whether we're aware of them or not to see the world a particular way, That it, whether it's safe or not, whether we're accepted and we belong or not. So it sounds like perhaps you're speaking to the same thing that my listeners know as mud, you know, this misguided unconscious dysfunction or decisions that, cr that are created through uh, difficulties in our lives, but you're addressing them partly through the uh, introduction of particular frequencies that then can move these particular parts of the body. And one thing I'll say, and I want to see if, if you have experience with this with your work, is that one of the things I've noticed as a clinician is that you will oftentimes see over time, if you work with enough people, particular areas of the body come along with particular emotional states. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and, they, and then those particular emotional states oftentimes come with particularly, you know, particular uh, stories. For example, depression seems to be pretty low in the body. And it also seems to be uh, combined with a story of lack of hope or lack of trust. You know, anxiety is a little bit, you know, further up, maybe in the solar plexus. It seems to be combined with the inability to make a decision. So I'm wondering if you see, if you're talking about the same thing, are, are you seeing overlap in what we're both talking about here and you're using the tool of music and, and frequencies and tones to address this? We'll be back after a quick break. Breaking into the show real quick, I want to tell you about a signature program from Next Level Human. And I want to start out by asking you, what is the major thing that is keeping most people from getting the results, the transformation they want in their four jobs? What keeps people stuck in health and fitness, in finance and career, in personal relationships, and in finding deep purpose and meaning. Well, from my perspective, the thing that is keeping them stuck is that they think they're supposed to find these things elsewhere. They think they're supposed to be studying podcasts and gurus and documentaries and books and blogs and all of these things. 
But the fact of the matter is there is only one rule in personal development and health and fitness, and that rule is do what works for you. Now, if you're going to follow the rest of the self-development and health and fitness world, what they're going to tell you is they're going to say, do it my way. Do it this way. Become a carnivore person. Become a paleo person. Learn some communication skills. Change your habits and your behaviors, and you're going to get the results. All you have to do is follow my recipe, my cookbook tactic, my one-size-fits-all way of doing things. And this does not work, and this keeps us stuck. And so what I wanted to do is create a one-stop shop that gives you all the things you need to create and build a program that works for you in all your four jobs. What if there was a hub, a membership that had workout libraries, that had course libraries, that had 24-7 access to ask questions, that had live trainings every month, that had live Q&As every month, that gave you everything you needed to learn what works for you, to master what works for you and to create and build a lifestyle you can love, live with, and get results from. Teach you a process, not a protocol. And what if all of this, which by the way is crammed with $2,000 worth of value, what if all of that was just available for $20 per month? That's what we have done with the Next Level Human Inner Circle. It is a complete membership, complete with Facebook community, workout library, course library, 24-7 chat access, access to me for Q&As, access to me to see as your personal coach, all the things that you need to get results that match you and your unique physiology, psychology, preferences, and practical circumstances. The inner circle is the thing that I wanted to create that every single person could get access to because it's about as cheap as a weekly coffee habit. The inner circle is what I believe is going to change you being stuck in your personal development and your health and fitness because it will teach you a process and give you all the education needed and all the wisdom needed to get results. To get involved with the inner circle, all you have to do is go to drjade.com slash inner circle. That's drj.com slash inner circle. I cannot wait to work with you inside the next level human membership community, the inner circle. Please go over there right now. Go ahead and sign up and I will see you on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. I think exactly what you're saying. I think, um, the body isn't rational, you know, so it's, it's not speaking in English, it's dealing with sensations. And so, yeah, if in early life, there was a lot of yelling going on, your body out of its need to survive will decide I'm going to kind of like armor myself, I'm going to like protect myself in those moments. And yeah, it is misguided. And it is an unconscious decision. You know, it isn't like, you know, if you ask somebody consciously, like, you know, what do you want for yourself? They'll say, I want peace and I want a good job and I want all of these things. But then you see what their life plays out like it is very different than what they're consciously saying, because there is a disconnect between the conscious and unconscious there. And so, you know, when we start to make, you know, the unconscious conscious, that to me is like working both with the body and those 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 deeper states and so yeah what frequency what sound is able to do sound is medicine because it is able to induce that parasympathetic response through the release of chemicals through the slowing down of brain waves you know it overall just slows the body down you know and so it goes into that more restful state And so for people whose baseline is all the way up here, you know, as a response to their environment, as a need to survive, they don't even realize that they've had their cortisol, their adrenaline, that all of these things have been jacked up for so long because they've adapted to it. That's their norm. But when you bring that all down a little bit, 
you know, in my case, I'm working with sound, people come in contact with this version of themselves they haven't known in sometimes decades, you know, because they've been running in certain patterns and certain, you know, misguided, unconscious, you know, decisions, and they don't even, they're not even aware of it, you know? And so the beautiful thing with sound is it does all of that without speaking, you know, it's nonverbal communication. It's the vibration meeting the vibration, you know, it's like the outer vibration meeting the inner vibration. And so, yeah, I do see emotions get held in certain areas. I also will sometimes see the way uh, somebody speaks. Sometimes, sometimes people can speak very in a very fiery way. Sometimes people are very like ether air. They're very like, yeah, I was thinking that. Yeah, of course. You know, and so like we're always picking up on these cues that people are offering us. And I'm just kind of taking that into account when when working with them. I I love that a lot. And actually, one of the things uh, I'll walk, I'll walk you, I know you probably know this, but I'll just walk our listeners through this because I think it speaks to what Avi's educating us on. But like, you know, when you think of stress, I think we have to understand that we get stuck in particular states, almost like a light dimmer, right? So like short-lived stress, we, we, we have it, we react to it, we get stronger, you know, we build resilience. So stress can go to strength, but stress also, if it's prolonged, can go to striving mode first, right? Because we're trying, we're in survival mode. It, then if it continues, we go into struggle mode. And of course, if it's super intense all at once or really prolonged, we can go into shock mode. And I think what you're speaking of here, Avi, is this idea that what we really want is we go, we want to go be able to go into stress and come back and build strength and resilience, you know, and, and be able to be flexible in, you know, I guess in the way that we uh, react to life. Whereas some people go from stress to striving and they get stuck there, right? Or they go from striving to struggle and they get stuck there. And we see this all the time, type A personalities, people who overexercise, you know, all of the, all of these things. And so it sounds like, you know, from my perspective, what you're essentially saying is, hey, Jade, we can use music to essentially tone down all that sympathetic drive because that's what that is, right? Stress to striving, striving to struggle, struggle to shock. It's basically the light switch of the sympathetic drive being turned on. And you're essentially saying in order for someone to rest and recover, we need to get them to safety and safeness. And we do that through sound. We can bring, shut that thing off. And by the way, I don't know, and I don't know if you do, but I don't know of many other things in medicine uh, that can do that. And it makes me be aware of sort of the Bramari breath, you know, the humming breath and the activation of the vagus nerve and its ability to have us, you know, this parasympathetic response, but it sounds like you're using multiple instruments, multiple frequencies and different things to do this. And I would imagine there's not much more powerful. Medicine doesn't really have a way uh, to do this. Yeah. I think, uh, it kind of rubs up against the medical model, which is, you know, Hey, you have this pain. Let me prescribe you this, you know, Hey, uh, you know, you have like, like you were saying depression, well, let's get you on some medication for the depression. Right. And, you know, when you see the rated, which, you know, I live in America, so it's like, you look at the rate at which, you know, just Americans are on at least one pharmaceutical prescription. It's, it's astounding. And then you look at younger populations. I mean, it's, it's pretty baffling the amount of younger kids that are on essentially, you know, amphetamines. And so what are, what is going on is in, in, in abil inability to focus, you know, an inability to regulate emotional states. And is that just because they're quote unquote depressed or is there a suppression of emotions, you know? And then when we talk about emotions, energy in motion, what is that? It's a vibration in the body. You know, it's mm. the way that that area of the body is like not pulsating at the rate that it should be because, something happened in early life, like you're saying, there could be some chronic stress that is sending them into, you know, striving mode or shock mode, whatever it looks like for that person. And so I think what, you know, the aim is, is to really first come into awareness of the pattern, you know, and that's where I think some like conscious work of understanding patterns and, and creating relationships to them can be powerful. But what I love about sound is it brings us into that unconscious state, you know, and it brings us into the body where those patterns are living. And those areas you can't just access through talking, you know. 
And the beautiful thing with frequency is frequency has no past, present, future. It just is, you know, in the same way that what happened is, it just is, you know, it's not good, bad. It's, it's there, you know? And so that's kind of what we work with when, when, when we uh, apply sound. Yeah. To those yeah. areas. Yeah. So let me, let me walk you through this and let's get into some of the, some of the frequencies. So, and, and I'm going to, I'll just give you a little bit of my take on this and then you correct me if I'm wrong on this. But when I think of like rational thinking mind, like me and you talking right now, like we're, we're engaged, we're focused on each other. We're sort of in our rational states. I think of, you know, high beta brain waves, right? So, you know, we're kind of you know, and maybe high beta brain waves, a little more anxiety, right? Like maybe we're just in beta brain wave state right now. And that's sort of a more rational thinking pattern. And and this is, I know I'm saying this like a statement, but it really is a question to you because I really don't know if this is correct. But then of course we can go into different brain wave states, right? We can go into lower, you know, or is it, is it lower frequencies, higher frequency? I don't know. You can tell me, right? But so we have, we can go into alpha, which is this place where it's more, you know, meditative, then we can kind of go into gamma and theta and delta, right? And it sounds like if I was hearing you appropriately from the other, from from earlier, when we're more rational, we're up in this beta state. But is it true then that what we're trying to do when we get more unconscious, we can use frequencies to deliver us more into these altered states of consciousness that give us access more to the unconscious, where, like you said, the conscious brain thinks in rational linear language the unconscious thinks more in symbol emotion you know metaphor dreamlike states and so mm-hmm. that's is that what is ultimately uh we're ultimately doing here when you when you're talking about rational uh, conscious versus getting into the unconscious and these unconscious holding patterns we'll be back after a quick break Break it into the show really quickly. I want to tell you about the brand new metabolic female workout system from Next Level Human. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that men and women need to train differently? In fact, let's ask a more simple question. Do you think that male and female physiology is different enough to warrant a different approach to diet, exercise, supplements, and lifestyle? Now, the fact remains that men and women certainly can do the same programs and get results, but should they? Women have two major sex steroids. Men have one. Women go through four or five different hormonal stages in life. Men go through two. Female hormones fluctuate throughout the month. Male hormones stay pretty static. There are some major differences in male and female physiology and psychology. And in fact, I have spent my whole career trying to understand those differences. And that's why I developed the first female only workout program back in 2015 called Metabolic Renewal. Millions of people have done this workout program. Millions of women have changed their bodies and their mindsets and taken control of their hormonal situations by doing the metabolic renewal program. Metabolic female is metabolic renewal 2.0. There is finally a follow along program that is done the same genre, the same style of workouts, all new workouts, and even a better system. You know, back when I built metabolic renewal, I built it with a team that was essentially a publishing agent. For me, And they put a lot of input into metabolic renewal and it was a great program, but it wasn't exactly the program I wanted to create. Metabolic female is the complete program, four levels, each level 12 weeks long. So there's metabolic female 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 and 4.0 for an entire 52 weeks worth of workouts progressed perfectly for women. And the key thing about these workouts is that they are rest based. Remember, the female physiology is exquisitely sensitive and refined compared to men. And that makes sense because they are the gender of child bearing. And that makes their metabolism a little bit more stress sensitive and reactive. And so when we build workouts for women, we want to make sure that the workout is individualized for each woman based on where they are in their menstrual cycle, where they are in their hormonal stage of life, and even how they feel that day. That's what metabolic female does. It is the only workout system like it 
in the world today that completely matches the correct intensity so you get enough but not too much depending on where you are in your menstrual cycle, where you are in your hormonal stage, and just how you're doing in your life at the moment. Metabolic Female is now available for everyone. You can go to drjade.com slash metabolic female, drjade.com slash metabolic female to get the brand new cutting edge rest-based training workout specifically designed for women only, drjade.com slash metabolic female. See you in the program. Can't wait to show you what we've done and let's get back to the show. Yeah, in terms of like working with instruments and working more in in sessions and the therapeutic value of, you know, what I love about natural occurring sounds is it's only natural occurring sounds that create the harmonics, which is what we're craving. You know, the harmonics are like the sounds above the sound, the sounds below the sound. It's these really rich sounds that resonate in the body in this really unique way. Whereas when we're working with an electronically produced tone that's more exact, we're using those for more exact purposes. So when I'm working with instruments, which are coming from the elements, which then reflect our own elemental structure. You know, when we talk about our fascia, fascia has a crystalline structure to it. You know, it's it's covering 70 to 80% of the body. And so when you take in the vibration of crystal, it's affecting the crystalline structure in your anatomy, right? And so when working with sound in that way, yeah, the the goal is to take people out of that more rational state where people tend to intellectualize their their problems and intellectually approach a situation and and try to quote unquote figure it out which is to me much more of a fight or flight energy the work that you know I'm doing and and that you were talking about is kind of allowing for those rational defenses to come down and allowing for the linear mind to turn off and when it does that a lot of the emotional interferences get turned down also. And so a lot of those holding patterns of fear and and pain and, and rejection and guardedness, all of those things come down and you are coming into this kind of much more, um, yeah, dr- dreamlike state where I think there's a lot more possibility, a lot of more uh, creativity. I mean, it's a state of imagination, right? It is a dreamlike state. And the beautiful thing is those were states that we were existing in when we were zero to two and two to four and four to six. You know, we weren't in beta brainwave states. We were in delta and theta brainwave states when we were really young, which is when most of how we took in the world got created, you know? It's, mm-hmm. And so when we're able to go back to that place and literally rewire the brain and restructure our physiology, you know, that's where I think a lot is, a lot is possible. And so I like to kind of combine both the understanding of the pattern and then moving into that deeper state of imprinting this new feeling onto the body, imprinting this new wave onto the brain. I really love that uh, because it makes me think, and I think this is what you're saying, but it makes me think like if you took on these misguided unconscious decisions, this mud that has essentially become cemented in your unconscious at times when you were living mostly in theta and, and other brain states, then, and if that stuff gets stuck in us, sounds like what you're saying is if we can put us back into those brain states, you can actually release some of this. And I certainly have seen in some of my work with breath work, which almost always comes along with music, right? It's like, you know, breath work and music sort of go hand in hand. Uh, I have seen people have uh, almost like psychedelic releases, you know, like where you'll see, you'll see people cry, you'll see people laugh, you'll see people get these uh, energetic shakes through their body, you'll, you'll feel, you'll see people sort of purging in a sense uh, of energetics. And some of it will be emotions, some of it will be physical sensations, and other things. And it sounds like that's essentially what you're doing. And I want to ask, because I am aware of some research in this area, for example, like 
uh, one, I think it was pretty recent study that I saw, or maybe I just saw it recently, so I don't know how old it is, but it's it was basically taking people with ADHD and putting them around beehives and having the bees, you know, essentially that sound of those bees. And I, I don't know, I think they said that's something like 432 or something like that, that a lot of these nature sounds fall in there, you may know or not. But what it did was it actually helped them focus. It took away some of these ADHD symptoms, which again, sort of from my perspective is interesting because where did this, you know, lack of focus or inability to stay focused come from? What, you know, it, did it come from these earlier states and get stuck in our physiology because it got stuck in these particular brain states or these nervous system states? And now we're coming in with certain frequencies to access those states. And maybe that's why I'm seeing in some of this work that I'm doing. And I'm, and I want to know if you're seeing it too, where people will literally emote and be like, you know, a memory will come to mind that they hadn't thought about in forever. They'll access this memory. They'll cry. They'll let it out. And then they're just like, you know, I had no idea that was there and it's like healing for them. So I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on that and have you seen that? And then I really want to get into, you know, thoughts about frequencies and which frequencies we all should be working towards. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've seen a a wide range of experiences depending on the person. And yeah, I think when you're talking about, and I, I, I mean, I've, I've seen it in breathwork classes where it's like people purging, like tears, a lot of emotion, sometimes people laughing, like sometimes that's their release, whatever, whatever it is, you know, it's not like they're releasing something from yesterday. They're usually releasing patterns that are decades old, you know, that have been there for a long time. And that's why it is so charged. There is so much emotion there. And I think a lot of times people uh, weren't able to express. They both didn't have the space to, and they both didn't have the capacity for. They didn't have a caregiver to attune to them. You know, and I think what happens a lot in early life is we abandon our own needs to satiate the needs of the parents, you know? So it's like, not what do I need? It's like, what does mom need for her to be safe? Because she's my caregiver. You know, that's how I feel safe is through my mother. So let me almost like morph my personality into like who I need to be to both receive love and to make sure that my mother is okay. And so I think those like coping mechanisms and those patterns get held in the body. And usually it shows up a long time later as thyroid issues, as autoimmune issues, as IBS, you know. And so then when we start to work with the shifting of those emotional states and then we start to release the pattern from the body and from the brain, there is oftentimes this, you know, a a lot of times people will say like, wow, I don't even know where that came from. Or like, I don't even know what happened, you know, and then they want to rationally understand it, but there is no need to rationally understand it. You know, it's like allowing for the experience to be what it is. So I think, uh, you know, Wilhelm Reich, uh, Freud's student talked about it as armoring. You know, there's a somatic armoring that happens where it's like, I put on armor to defend myself from the pain of life. And so when we take that armor off, there is a release. And so all of that armoring is also existing as a vibrational state. And so when we release that pattern held in the body, um, we're able to do that, you know? And so I, I, I'm not familiar with that beehive study, but I do know of some studies out of uh, UC Santa Barbara that talks about how ADHD uh, is a result of emotional trauma, right? And so when there is that stored stress from emotional dysregulation, it suddenly you have an inability to focus, you know, an inability to, to pay attention. And what's amazing with the sound is that we'll actually shut down ranges of frequencies that were traumatizing to us. And ah. so and so what ranges do people tend to shut down are the ranges of a man and a woman's voice, right? And so we're shutting down those sounds that were too overwhelming for us. And then they're in school, they're in different environments, and they're like, oh, I have an inability to focus, you know, but you literally can't hear the sonic information because you had shut that down as a result of, you know, earlier experiences. 
Wow, Avi, that is so fascinating. And I'll have to look at that that study as well, because you know how like whenever you're reading studies, this you know you forget right like, like the exact details. So I'll I'll uh, I'll for the listeners, I'll kind of look that up and, and make sure I have that uh, correct. But let's get into this a little bit. Uh, I know that one of the things you alluded to, and I'm very curious about this in your work as I've been following you now and learning from you, is that you mentioned this idea that you can create a particular electronic sound, right? Mm-hmm. And, and many people do this, but you seem to use, uh, you know, sort of bowls and other things that are, you know, what would we call them? More organic. And it seems like you're alluding to the fact that this does something different based on the harmonics and is that true and can you just walk us through a little bit of, of of what that means because I know a lot of us get exposed to stuff like you know you go on Spotify and you're like okay I'm going to listen to you know 528 hertz or 432 hertz or I'm going to listen to 960 whatever hertz you know is this the same thing as what you're doing with uh you know the sounds is it is it essentially equivalent or is there something different about it as soon as something travels through wires the sound gets changed you know it's no longer organic and you know it needs to almost like get pushed down a little bit in order for you to experience the sound and then when you're using certain platforms they'll only accept for instance mp3 and so MP3s compress it even further. And so, you know, it could still have elements of that sound, but you've also lost some of those highs or lows of that sound. And so, you know, that's one thing that can happen when we're listening, you know, through Spotify or whatever the platform is. I think YouTube's even worse with that stuff, um, just the, the way they have to compress things. In terms of organically produced or living sounds, to me, that is like one of the most effective ways because what I love, I'm looking at like my bowls in the room, what I love about the natural instruments is that they're coming from the elements, you know, and the elements are mirrored in our own anatomy. And so we're made up of the elements and we crave the elements, you know, because we're constantly codifying and and downloading patterns of nature. It's what we do when we go outside, you know, it's not just like, ah, fresh air. You're like Neo in the matrix with those green letters kind of pouring down. You're codifying these patterns of nature, which then affect the way you hear things, the way your brain moves. You go by water and you literally entrain to the rhythm of the waves, you know, and aside from the benefits of like the air and and the water, you know, your, your brain and your heartbeat are moving to the rhythm of the water. So when we take in sounds that are coming from the elements, there is just an organic um, acoustic sound to them that I don't think can be matched. Where I think electronically produced sounds can be really impactful is using it for like a more specific purpose. You know, so I think in a general sense, acoustic sounds are amazing because they contain the harmonics. A lot of these wide ranging sounds that are really powerful for us. Uh, but you know, when working with like more exact sounds to elicit a certain state or a certain response, then I feel like that, uh, can be, can be more powerful. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting for me. It it reminds me that that discussion that you just walked us through reminds me a little bit of like sunlight versus like red light therapy, right? Like obviously sunlight has this wide array of all the, you know, wide array of, you know, sort of, um, the electromagnetic spectrum, you know, of light that that we can see, but it's got a whole lot more going on. But then if we want to do something like, you know, uh, heal a joint or something like that, or avoid, you know, some of the, we might block out some of the blue and increase some of the red or things like that. And it sounds like, you know, what you're saying is the acoustics maybe are more like, you know, sunlight, that there's just more going on and, and more to, that we can interact with and codify, but we also can get more specific with, particular frequencies, if, if I'm hearing you correctly. And I guess the next question, and that brings us to probably the question that's on a lot of people's mind that they're going to ask an expert in sound like you about, and that, that's going to be, what are the frequencies that uh, are most impactful? And is that even a good 
question because you know how we are rationally, Avi, right? We want to be like, Avi, give me like what is the frequency I should be listening to to heal X, Y, and Z. I'm imagining you're going to answer this. Uh, it's probably much more complex than that and more nuanced than that. But walk us through sort of this talk about where everyone's talking about frequencies now, right? Like this particular yeah. frequency is better than that frequency. And how do you see that kind of stuff? Yeah, I wish I could show you my phone to show you what the DMs look like, where it's like, it's just, it's so wild. It's like, <laughs> I got a DM, like, <laughs> I got a DM three days ago, and somebody's like, what is the frequency to get over my boyfriend? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like hey if i had that frequency i would i would be solving everyone's problems yeah i was like i wouldn't even be talking to you if i had that frequency yeah, um, exactly yeah yeah i mean people contact me with like a lot of different issues and i think they're looking for i mean they're in pain usually first off and so i think you know you're looking for answers and looking for solutions in those moments um, and so I think it really is dependent on what's going on with the person, you know, like, when somebody has like a, 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 a cancer, for instance, there's different frequencies for different cancers, you know? And so it, it, it's sometimes people just say like, I have cancer. Well, it's like, what type of cancer, you know, what type of, what, what type of thing are you dealing with? And then it's also... You know, to me, what emotionally is going on with the person, because what can happen is, like you're talking about, we're looking for these these answers and, and solutions. When I think somebody receives a name or a label of, I have anxiety, I have depression, I have, you know, God forbid, a terminal illness, that name and that label carries a lot of charge, a lot of emotion to it, you know? And so sometimes like they talk about this in Chinese medicine, they move away from the name and the labeling and move more into like, let's warm the body up. Let's cool the body down. Let's, let's bring this into the system. Let's take this out of the system. And to me, that is a uh, much softer and uh, more neutral approach than, than, um, you know, anytime somebody comes to me and I'm working with them, I really try to move out of the like labeling of the situation. And I try for them to feel more of the sensation of what that feels like and work with that. Because once we're able to access, wow, I feel it in my temples, you know, it could be like something really extreme that they have, or I feel it in my chest. It's like, okay, then I may even, I'll either apply an instrument over that area or I'll work with certain frequencies depending on like what I'm looking into for that person. Uh, so it really, you know, people have trillions of frequencies running through them at all times. And so to prescribe like one exact frequency for all of humanity feels a bit large and, and hard for me to, to really say, um, I'll just say for me right now, a frequency I'm listening to a lot is 15 hertz for pain management. I find that to to be very helpful. I'm also listening to 2720 hertz um, as well, which can help with inflammation. Um, and so, I mean, those are just two that I'm personally using, uh, but it would feel like a little out of alignment for me to just shoot off a bunch of frequencies and say like, this is great for all, for everybody, because I don't think that's, that's always the case. But for me right now, I'm listening to 27, 20 and 15 Hertz a lot for pain management and inflammation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'll, I'll throw something out that maybe you want to comment on just so I can, I'll give the listeners my take. And by the way, uh, I'm not an expert in this space, but the way just the, I conceptualize this is I go, we humans, we're each unique, right? You know, so Avi, me, all of you listeners, we're incredibly unique. So you can kind of see us as our own music, our own frequency. We can, you know, just physicality, you know, you see us as, you know, we're we're all very unique. So to me, I would imagine we're all sort of a unique symphony, right? And so one hurts, you know, one particular frequency 
is going to sound differently or do something different in me than it might be. Like I think about it, it's like, you know, depending on the music you're playing, right? Like, I don't know if you're, if you're in a symphony and someone comes in with a violin, a strong violin, it, may, it might make sense and it might harmonize everything. But if you're in a symphony and someone comes in like with a giant electric guitar and like starts, you know, you know, going to town on it, it might disrupt the whole, you know, symphony. So I kind of look at it in this lens where it's sort of like, you know, different frequencies are going to have a different effect in different bodies and different emotional states. The other thing I'll say there, and, and by the way, I don't know him, but I'm, I'm going to hear what Avi has to say about this. And then the other thing I see in my work is that step one is about opening people up to awareness, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's really about what we can do. This is what I think breath work, journaling, uh, music, uh, sound, it's opening people up to the awareness of how their uh, biofield, their their energetics, their uh, you know unconscious emotional body is translating into biochemistry and physicality and perhaps getting stuck in the body. And it's opening up to those things. So when I'm working with people, I say, you know, we can focus on a memory. We can focus on a physical sensation. We can focus on a repeated pattern, you know, sort of in your life. And we can focus on, you know, stuck emotions. And usually it falls into these four patterns for me. And what happens is regardless, of, depending on what you focus on, certain things will come up. So, you know, imagine going through breath work and focusing on one of these four elements and then listening to particular music. And then certain people are going to get, you know, sort of effects off that and it might be appropriate. And I think, you know, it may be about finding another particular frequency that resonates with someone in the same way we resonate with particular genres. You know, I know when I was young, I was very much into hardcore, you know, hip hop. Now I'm much more into sort of like Rufus the Soul and more, you know, of that kind of stuff. And it's just this resonance, you know, sort of that I resonate with that brings me, you know, sort of energy, right? You know, and so I'm wondering if we're going to find out that this is the way perhaps that this works. But I do think that people asking for particular frequencies, I think should realize that I think a lot of what we're doing, you know, um, and I'm curious again, Avi, what you think about this is opening people up to the awareness where then the work begins. Whereas therapy doesn't, do this oftentimes it just it just is processing from a rational place so there's not true awareness there's logical awareness but we all know that that's not true awareness so true awareness is a knowing a felt sense right of 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 something and i do think these treatments sort of bring us to this opening up where now it's like oh i really get it it's not just that i have a mother wound i know what that is like from a felt sense and how it's that unique mother wound is particular to Jade and not just a rational thing that I'm talking about with my therapist. And I think these things open up that awareness. And once you understand that deep felt physical individual awareness, the real work can begin. You start to become aware of the patterns in your life. You start to become aware of the behaviors that come along with that. And I do think it's really about the opening, but I'm wondering your thoughts on that. And then we can sort of wrap it up. Yeah. So I agree. I think the first step is awareness. And to me, the step after that is acceptance. You know, it's like you first have to have a relationship with it. Otherwise, it's like that line, if a tree falls in the forest and nobody hears, it doesn't make a sound. It's like if it's outside of my awareness, even if I keep seeing it show up, it doesn't matter. So you first have to create the relationship with with what's there. And another element to that is like, you know, how open is somebody to wanting to shift out of that, you know, because you could have the Dalai Lama delivering like the most amazing speech to somebody, but if they're like walled off, it's not going in. So it's also like how much, how open is somebody to even receiving this? You know, are they in resonance with the medicine that's being offered? Because as great as a moment can be or a retreat or a session can be, to me, what's more important is what is the daily pattern that they're persisting in? You know, there's that line, whatever you practice grows stronger. You know, so if I do a session with somebody and that person is feeling like they're very in their body, they're, they're very loose, they're, they're very flowing, but then the rest of their day, they're, they're cut off, they're, they're enraged, they're doing all of these things that are counter to what that session is, well, that's going to override whatever that single moment was. 
So to me, it's really about like, what is the daily pattern that I'm persisting in, you know, because that is really going to create that truth for somebody. I don't know if you've ever seen that study that shows the levels of happiness of people a year after they win the lottery. And although they have an initial spike, but a year later, their levels of happiness are the exact same. And the same goes for somebody who, God forbid, gets into a bad car accident. They become a paraplegic, obviously a huge dip initially, but then a year later, they're relatively at the same levels, right? Because it isn't about this one event that's going to open you up like that. It is like, what is the daily pattern, those small moments that I'm committing to? So what I feel like sound does and what I'm hearing from you, a lot of the work that you are doing does is it elicits a response in the system to kind of like disrupt the pattern, you know? And as soon as you create that, it it creates like an awakening in the body and the felt sensation and also in the understanding of what's possible, you know? It's like giving language to something that you didn't know was there, you know, or seeing a color that you didn't know had existed. And so as soon as we see that or feel that, you know, they say, as soon as you imprint a new feeling onto the body, the body doesn't forget. So when we stimulate a deep relaxation response through sound, the body doesn't even realize how tense it was. And now they realize, wow, I feel so at ease. I feel so in my body. And then to me, it's like, what are the patterns that I'm persisting in on a daily basis to kind of stay in that, to stay in my body? Um, and that to me is like the where the real, you know, work happens. Yeah, that's so well said, Avi. I love I love that whole uh, thought process. And and of course, right now, everyone's talking about nervous system holding patterns and all of this kind of stuff. And to me, I think this work, what you're doing is like the thing that these individuals should be doing. So I've taken a lot of your time. I so appreciate uh, you and your genius and the work uh, that you are doing. Uh, I want to give you an opportunity to just close this out with any final thoughts, but I do want to let everyone know that uh, Avi has some resources on his website, uh, the anti-manifestation manifestation guide is one of those things uh, that you can, uh, you know, go over to his site and get. So it's, a, it's a, a really cool sort of thing that he has there. Um, also, don't forget his website, uh, you know, getsoundrx.com. And you're SoundRx on social, right? At SoundRx? Or is it at no. SoundRx? <laughs> No, I had to do, you know, somebody, I was like looking Someone at Someone else got it, yeah. Somebody else got it and it's like totally inactive. You know, they, they had yeah. like one post from like 10 years ago. I reached out, they never responded. Yeah, I would they love, probably don't even know they have it anymore. Yeah, I would love to have SoundRx, but they're not mm-hmm. responding to me. But yeah, I'm GetSoundRx mm-hmm. on IG as well. Yeah. yeah. So, so at GetSoundRx.com, uh, uh, at SoundRx on IG. So, Avi, anything that you want to leave the listener with? I think they're, you know, obviously you're in the Los Angeles area. I was actually in Santa Monica for up until a couple of years ago. So mm-hmm. you and I were definitely in, in the same neighborhood. So I guess you do classes and things like that. But um, any other things you want to leave them with uh, that uh, and where they can find you and how they can work with you directly? Yeah. So again, it's the IG is at GetSoundRx. The website is the same, dot com. What my main focus on right now are are the trainings that I offer. I do them both virtually and in person. And so we have another one starting at the end of September. And it's it's really beautiful. I mean, that's the power of this virtual space is going to be having people from England and from Greece and, you know, from America all joining in. And I say the training is to really help create conscious practitioners of sound. And so I take people through all of the different areas that they would need to in order to facilitate on their own. The most important being their understanding of what it is doing and why it is doing it. You know, one of my teachers said, if you don't know, you bring people into a space of not knowing. So it's really important to understand what we are working with, how we are working with it, and then you know, the beauty is like watching people take it out into their spaces, into their communities and see like, you know, a town over here and they're doing like 
sound healing and vocal toning. And I'm like, that's so, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's what comes to mind. Yeah. And that's, so that's great. Everybody like imagine yourself, you know, getting educated through Avi and being able to do this work that he's doing to heal so many people in your community. So this is, this is to me the next level human way, right? It's like you take your, your passions and your pain, you combine them in an interest, you begin to do that work authentically, and then you begin to learn, teach and love or create for others. And I just think it's so cool what you're doing. I'm incredibly grateful um, for your time, my friend. So thank you so much for being here and do me a favor, Avi, just hang on the line because I want to make sure all this uploaded. But for all of you, uh, please check Avi out uh, and we will see you at the next episode. You have been listening to the Next Level Human podcast with Dr. Jade Tita. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure you subscribe and consider leaving a review. You make the biggest difference when you pass on your lessons and inspire others. That's why reviews like this are so powerful. Your words may be the only ones that resonate for someone else. Please remember the information in this podcast is for educational purposes only. Always consult your personal physician or therapist before making any lifestyle changes. And finally, thank you for who you are in the world and the difference you make.